Welcome. Today I'm going to show you guys how to play Dell of Merchants, the Guild of Extraordinary Traders. It was made by uh, Snowdale Design, and it even has a seal of excellence on it from the Dice Tower. Now, Dale of Merchants is a deck building game. And just like with Dominion, and just like with Clank, your deck will start with a maximum of 10 cards. Just like those two deck building games. But unlike those deck building games, Dale of Merchants is only like a 30 minute game. So it's really short, and the way you play is totally different. So first of all, I wanted to show you guys the animals that come with this particular Dale of Merchants. I think there's four of them now. And so each Dale of Merchants has their own starting animals, their own animals. And you can play with any of the expansions you want. You don't even have to get Dale of Merchants. You can get Dale of Merchants 2, or Dale of Merchants 3, or even Dale of Merchants the Collection, for instance. And if you started with one of those instead of the one that I've got here, it wouldn't matter because you can still play Dale of Merchants on its own regardless of which, which expansion you get or if you get the first one that came out, obviously. Which is pretty cool, of course. But I got the first one. And so with the first one comes the Chameleons, the Veiled Chameleons, I should say, the Adapting Veiled Chameleons, it also comes with the snappy scarlet macaws. It also comes with the lucky ocelots. It also comes with the dealing giant pandas. the thieving northern raccoons and the hoarding flying squirrels. So those are the six animals that come with this game. Now depending on how many players play the game will depend on how many animals you will use in the game. If you only have two players you will only play with the three animal decks. And you can choose, or randomly choose if you want, which ones you're going to play with. But if it's the first time you've played this game, you should probably choose yourself. Because some of these decks are harder than others. And the Veiled Chameleons are probably the hardest ones there is to play with. And some people might not like playing with the thieving northern raccoons. So you should probably just pick what is best for you guys or um, for someone who's new to this game especially probably shouldn't pick this one on your first game so but if you're playing a two-player game you will play with three of these animals if you're playing a three-player game you will play with four and then if you're playing obviously with four players you will have five animals so that means you will never play with all six at once because you only play, it only goes up to four players. So you'll never play with all of them. Which is okay, because, you know, like I said, some players might not like playing with those raccoons. So, although they're not so bad compared to some of the other uh, animals out there in the other uh, Dale of Merchants games. There are definitely, there's a definitely at least one animal worse than the raccoons. Now, with that said, you can play with any of the Dale of Merchants games. You can get all four of them and mix and match all of the different animals from all of the games. So, obviously, this has a lot of replayability in the game as well. So, let's say you're playing with a two-player game. Let's say these are the three animals you're going to start with. And I'm going to start with the chameleons in this demonstration because they are the hardest to play with, but I do understand how to play with them now, so we might as well go with the hardest ones for sure. Now, if you're playing with two players, each player is going to get 
each, one of each, they're going to get this one here, which is a one, and it's obviously got the animal on it, the Veiled Chameleon. And if you look at the rest of the cards here, after the uh, four initial ones, Gift Voucher, Good Old Times. See, none of these cards here have the animal on it. It's just the first one. Because this is a game of merchants. You're going to set up stalls in this game, and you're going to want to sell stuff in your stalls, so to speak. You're not actually going to sell anything once you've set up a stall. But the point is, you're a merchant, and you're setting up a stall for the people who aren't obviously playing the game with you to buy all your doodads, all your different types of gear and stuff like that you'd want to sell. Maybe uh, this mirror here, you know, or a nice, uh, you know, set of boots or shoes. Or, you know, maybe they want an hourglass, something. But the, that's the point, is setting up a stall. And obviously, you can even, um, obviously, one of these three animals will have to be in the first stall, which makes sense because you should have a merchant within the stall. You see, the way this game works is you will have to set up eight different stalls. Once you've set up the eighth stall, the game is over and you win. There's no victory points in this game. It's the player who gets to finish their eighth stall first that wins. Now, the way you build a stall is by simply using an action like this. I'm going to spend my action to build the first stall, which is putting this guy down here to build the first stall. The first stall comprises of the number one. So he is my first stall. Now, if I wanted to build a stall number two, let's do this one here for the lucky ocelots. So this is my action here. I'm going to take the new season from my hand as my action and build my second stall. So now I have one and two stalls. That means the next stall after this will be stall three, and so I have to either do an actual three, or I can do a one and two of the same color, like that, for instance. Now, obviously, as you get more stalls, it'll be harder and harder to do this because once you have the third one out, then you have to do the fourth. And so there, there is some fours. So here's a four and there is a five. There's a couple of them actually. So here is the five, for instance. So that's already five stalls, but you need eight stalls to complete the game. So that means stall six will have to be a combination of the same color, same animal, unless you have a card that says otherwise. And we will go over card abilities in a separate video. But the point is, you are going to have to have a deck of similar colored cards if you want to complete this stall. Now the point is to actually complete this, all eight stalls, as soon as you possibly can. And of course, using all of the abilities you can think of that will help you along the way to do that much faster than the other merchant you're playing against, obviously, is the case. And so, if I wanted to do a 6, I could do a lot of different options. I could do a 1 and a 5, but, you know, that would assume that I still had a 1 of the same color available, which I do currently, or... What would most likely be the case, I could do a 4 and a 2 to make a 6. Okay? Then, of course, for 7, I would have to do a 5 and a 2, because that equals 7. So I could make this my 7th stall, for instance. Or a 4 and a 3, this would be my a good 7th stall, too, for instance. And then, of course, for an 8th stall, you could still do more than one you could still do more than two cards. You could do these three here and this one, which would make eight. And that's fine, too, because they're all the same color, as long as they're all the same color, and they're all in your hand at the same time. That's another thing. If you don't have the same color in your hand, and to make a stall, to 
you know, like the number eight stall, for instance, then you're going to have to wait until you have a hand of all the same cards otherwise. And so there's a lot of abilities that will help you do this because you're only allowed to have a hand of five cards. Just like in Dominion, you have a hand of, of five cards. Unless you have a card that says otherwise, that you can have more cards in your hand. Just like Dominion, there are cards that do that as well. And there are cards in this game that do that as well. But the point is, five cards can be kind of hard as you get higher up on the stalls, and it'll be harder to complete the stalls, obviously. Now, I said that everybody starts with ten cards in this game. So if you are only playing with two players, what's going to happen is you're going to get this one, you're going to get this one, and you're going to get this one. Okay, every player is going to get to start with these three animals, if those are the animals you're playing with. Then, you need, you need seven more cards to make it ten, right? So then every player is going to get seven. I mean, that means each player of the two players that are playing the game are going to get seven of these junk cards. Four, five, six, and seven. And that makes up their starting deck. Okay? Now, then they're going to obviously shuffle these together and they are going to draw the top five and it might it might be possible they're all junk cards who knows now regardless of the case let's say this is the starting hand here um these values up here five means that's the amount of cards I can buy. I can buy a card costing up to five. I can't buy two cards as an action costing up to five, but there are abilities that would allow me to take a card from the market out there, for sure. But normally, you would use these cards here to purchase a card in the market. You see, the rest of these cards here that go with the animals, they will go into the market deck. So there'll be a little market deck over here where my hands are. A big, not, not too big, but of the three starting animal decks, there'll be a market deck. And there'll be a market out where you can actually buy the cards from. And so there might be, you know, some cards that might not show up for a while. And then, of course... So here's the market. Okay, so let's say, where's my starting hand? So here's my starting hand. I have five here. I can buy a purchase of a total of five card, or a five costing card. Well, how much card, how much do these cards here cost? Well, over here, this one costs exactly five because that's how much it costs to purchase. This one also costs exactly five, the gift voucher, because it's four plus one. This one is 7, because it's 5 plus 2. This one is actually 5, because it's 3. Actually, no, it's 6, because it's 3 plus 3. And this one is actually 8, so 4 plus 4. And so, obviously, some of these you will not be able to purchase, because you only have 5 money, technically. Now, when you do decide to buy a card as an action, because that's one of the actions you can do, is you're going to buy a card you know, from the market. So let's say I was going to buy this one here, the gift voucher for five. Well, it costed five exactly. So all of the cards I used to purchase this are going to get discarded. Now here's where things can be a little different for those who are used to playing Dominion. Usually when you play Dominion, the cards you buy usually gets discarded as well. But in this game, when you purchase a card or gain a card from this location, you are actually going to keep the card in your hand. Yes, the card you just purchased is going to stay into your hand. The cards you used to buy the card, they get discarded. But the card you bought, just bought, will stay in your hand. And then you will draw until you have five cards once again. And so here we're drawing cards. And so now, I only have one card left in my deck, and that will stay that way for a while. And then when I purchase a card, or use a technique, for instance, 
there might be some cards going into the discard pile. And then, if I can't get the amount, if I can't draw up to five, just like in Dominion, if I can't draw up to five, then I would shuffle my discard pile at that moment, and that would form a new deck, and I would draw the corresponding cards, just like in Dominion. So that is similar to Dominion in that regards. But the whole getting to keep the card every time you buy it, that is something that is not quite common in Dominion. And you know, there's a, you know, obviously some cards out there that, that you do that in Dominion, but in most Dominion games, 99% of them anyway, most of the cards are going to send your card to the discard pile. So that's what is really different about this game versus Dominion. Now, what's one of the other actions you can take? So I already described that one of the actions was buying cards from the market. Now, when you do buy a card from the market, or gain a card from the market, for instance, these will slide down. So eventually, these higher costing cards will get a little cheaper as they move down the line. And then a new card will obviously show up from the, from the market deck to fill up the market. Now, one thing about these junk cards here is they're only good for purchasing cards. You can't use them for, um, unless a card says, says otherwise, because there is some cards out there that say otherwise. In fact, there's, there's an animal card that does this in this particular game. Not in this particular game, but in this particular uh, box game. The uh, squirrels do it. But normally, you can't use junk in a stall. You can't put it in a stall, and that makes sense, right? Who would want to buy junk from your stall anyways? Exactly. So there would be no sense in doing that anyways. But you wouldn't be able to do it anyways because it's just worthless merchandise. It even says it right up there on underneath junk. Worthless merchandise. And so you can only use these to buy cards. And so obviously you might not want to have a ton of junk cards because you can use these cards as well to buy cards but they also have abilities and things as well. So they're a lot more useful than obviously these here. And there are cards out there, like um, some of the pandas cards do it, and there's at least one Scarlet Macaw that does it, for instance, but um, card that does it. So there are ways of getting rid of the junk cards you don't want. And there are other ways of getting rid of certain animal cards you don't want as well if you really want to do that. I mean, trashing them. And so that's really the only way you trash cards in this game is if you have a card that says you can throw it away, so to speak, which means toss it in the trash pile, so to speak. And then once it goes to that trash pile, it stays in the trash pile. You won't get it back. Unlike with Dominion, there are some cards where you can get it back. So that's pretty cool. This is a pretty cool game. Now... What was one of the other actions you can take? Well, one of the other actions you can take in this game is you can actually use a technique. Here's a technique, for instance. If you take the technique action, you also have this little plus here on this particular technique especially. I think it's on all of the actual technique cards. This one also has it. So if you use a technique card, you get to do the ability which is, with this, you get to swap this card with any card in the market and then place the new card in your hand. So I could swap out the gift voucher for the favorite toy, putting the gift voucher where the favorite toy was, for instance. And then, because it has a plus sign on it, and I use this ability, this technique ability, I actually now have an extra action to use. And so, let's say I have my first five... Uh, my first um, stalls, first five stalls are completely done, and I want to complete the sixth stall. Well, let's say these were the cards I had in my hand. Ooh, now I can create my sixth stall with these two cards if I really wanted to, because that is the object of the game, to try to get your eighth stall before your opponents do. So that would be very useful, obviously. Or you could purchase a card as your second action after you use a technique card. Now, with that said, there's another ability out there that can be a little bit confusing, especially with the chameleon cards. So now, there are, there, the, these abilities that I'm talking about 
are called passive abilities. Okay? So this is a passive ability card. There are other cards that have passive abilities, but most of the uh, Veiled Chameleon cards are passive, except for the gift voucher, of course. And so, meaning, a passive ability is a card that will always be active, okay? And so, you don't have any say in what it does unless it says otherwise. Like this one says, you may throw away one card from the market deck once in your turn. That is a may, but this part is not. This card is a copy of the top card of the market's discard pile. So, there is a discard pile um, for the market. So let's say the, let's find a two. Let's say this card here, Reflection, was in the discard pile for the market. Not for the discard pile for your player, but the discard pile for the market. Well, that card, the, uh, where'd it go? I had it here just a second ago. Oh, good old times. This card here would have the same value as Reflection, because that's the card that was in the discard pile. So this would actually cost two. So if you wanted to buy a card, for instance, it would now be a two instead of a three. Obviously, that also goes for the case if you wanted to build your third stall. Let's say the third stall you wanted to build, and you had this card here, and you wanted to use the this card to build the third stall. Well, the problem is, this was the card here in the discard pile, so this is now a two, and so therefore cannot be used to make your third stall unless you've got a one of the same color that you haven't used yet for a stall. So that is a problem, obviously. And that's something I didn't quite get at first because I didn't really understand that the passive abilities are always active. So whether you like them or not, they are always active. So that's why the Village Chameleons is a little bit harder. Now, some abilities may not be available. And here's another thing to note. If you decide not to throw away one card from the market deck once in your turn with this passive ability, and this doesn't take an action to do a passive ability, by the way. You, you have to do all your passive abilities. This card is a copy of the top card of the market's discard pile. If there is no discard pile available currently because you didn't decide did not throw away one card, then this passive ability wouldn't be active and so therefore it would stay the same color and it would stay green as well. Because here's the thing, if this was in the discard pile, flashy show, then this would become this. This would be blue and it would be a five just like this if this was in the discard pile because this is a passive ability. So that is definitely, this definitely has a lot more thought process. You're definitely going to be thinking more when you're playing with the Veiled Chameleons but it's really fun to pull off if you can make it work. And of course, you're going to be having access to all the other colors while you're playing this game too, just like the other player is, and so you don't have to go after just one color in particular. You can have a stall of a red, you can have a stall that's blue, you can have a stall that's green, another stall that's blue, another stall that's green, etc., etc. You don't have to have the same uh, you don't have to have all your stalls with the same animal. In fact, I don't even think it's possible unless you somehow were able to purchase every single of the same color of the same animal somehow and your player, your opponents didn't touch it, didn't buy any of the cards. Still, that's not likely to happen. So that is the case. And so there's a lot of cards here that I'll have to go over in a separate video and explain how they all work. Okay, so so basically, let's just do a quick review of what I've mentioned. So you're going to have a market deck, and then you're going to have the market. Okay, when you buy or gain a card from the market, then you will move the corresponding cards down a notch to make more space uh, in the market, obviously, because the new cards will go here, for instance, and then. There might, be a, there might be a discard pile for the market, might be, especially if you're playing with the pandas, 
Um, there will definitely be a, probably be a discard pile if you're playing with the giant pandas. And then um, another thing um, that I want to mention is that each player will have their own discard pile, they'll have their own deck, and they'll have their own hand of usually five cards, unless they have a card that says otherwise. There's a passive ability that the macaws have that allow them to have increase their hand size by one, so they can have six cards, for instance. If they had two of those, obviously they would have more cards. When you buy a card, all of the cards you use to purchase the card go to your discard pile. The card you bought, the card you gained, stays in your hand, unless you used it to buy a card. If you use a technique card, the card you used as a technique can't be used to buy anything. And it can't be it also can't be used to build a stall because you just used it as a technique. And then that technique card will get discarded as well. And then the cleanup phase begins. You then draw your cards that you need to draw that equal five, up to five cards in your hand. And then you fix this and make sure that, you know, the stalls are full of, you know, cookies, for instance. And, ooh, spyglass, <laughs> for instance. And then that's your turn. Your turn is done. So you usually just get one action. Unless you use a technique card, then you have two actions you're going to use. And if you have passive ability cards, like here's that passive ability, those are always active. So you definitely have to think about certain passive abilities for sure, because they are always active. Unless it says you may use this as a passive ability, then you may, you don't have to. But the chameleons don't have that as an option. Almost all of their abilities are always active. And so it can definitely change things for sure. Now, I think I've explained pretty much everything I can think of that um, you need to know to play the game. So um, we will do a video on how all the cards work, how all the animals work, what they do, what it all means. There will probably be a couple of videos for sure. And um, we'll also do a small gameplay as well to show you how the game works. Well, thank you guys for watching.